Miles Garrett has been chasing around Ben Roethlisberger, the Steelers starter, and it's getting closer to official that he will be the starter in 2021. After the show ended yesterday, and we spent some time trying to figure out where all this was heading, Art Rooney II issued a statement that says a lot, but doesn't say everything. Here's what Rooney had to say. Ben Roethlisberger and I met yesterday. That was Tuesday morning. We had a productive meeting. We were able to discuss a lot of things that relate to where we are and where we want to go. Ben assured me that he is committed to coming back to help us win. And I told Ben that we would like to have him back to help us win a championship. Here is the key line. We both understand that the next step is to work out Ben's contract situation. I'll say it again, Chris. Yep. If it's just a matter of taking that $19 million he's due to make this year and moving it around, a little abracadabra under the salary cap, it's not easy to do. It could be done in less than an hour or, or, or less than that. It could be done in 15 minutes. It's not hard. You take the $19 million, you convert $18.025 million of it, to wait 18.925 million of it excuse me into a signing bonus you reduce his salary to the minimum of 1.075 that 18.925 gets spread over three four five years and it minimizes the additional amount that gets put onto the 22.25 million in past cap charges that will hit the cap this year they're trying to land between 22.25 and 41.25 it should not be hard to figure that part of it out unless the Steelers wanted to take less than $19 million. That's the big question that is yet to be resolved. But I feel like that's what the Steelers have been dancing around. And then at the last possible minute, they're going to say, oh, by the way, we'd really like it if you'd take 15, 14, yeah, right. 13, whatever million sure. Less than nineteen million. Well, I, I I mean I I would expect that to be the case at some point that that will be the conversation. Like, like you said, I mean, hey, it, I think they'll work out. They're going to work out the particulars. You're right; it's not going to be that hard to do. But now they got to kind of get into the nitty gritty uh, of the details and what is what is Ben willing to go out there and play? What is, what is he willing to compromise on the money situation? You know, I would think at this point of his career, where he's at, and we've talked about this a lot with all the money he's made. Um, that he he's obviously realistic and knows where the team is at in the salary cap situation. It, it's more about legacy at this point than anything. I think for for a guy like Ben Roethlisberger trying to get back to a Super Bowl, maybe win a third one, that puts you in a special class of quarterbacks, certainly. So uh, I would expect. I, I I mean I don't know, Mike. My gut says I think he's gonna he's gonna you know bow down to those needs. He might go south of eighteen. Maybe he'll get down into 10 to $12 million. He's made a ton of money, and they're certainly, hey, they're certainly taking a chance. I don't want to say a chance, but they're taking a chance on an older quarterback who didn't play great towards the end of the year, as we know. But also, you know, th there's not many other options out there for them as we sit here right now either. So uh, I'll, I'll be interested to see where it goes, but I do expect them to take that, take that big-time pay cut. I, I don't know that I do or that I don't. All I know is at this point, it hadn't, well, I don't know as of today, right. as of yesterday, as and more accurately, as of Tuesday late afternoon, early evening, the Steelers, to my understanding, had not yet broached the possibility of taking less than 19, that it was always about being creative. To, to But you don't, it, it's, there's no creativity involved. We know the formula. You take the money he's going to make, you reduce it to the minimum, and you convert the rest of it to a bonus that gets spread over multiple years. They've been doing that ever since a salary cap has been in existence. That's why teams get themselves into cap trouble because they deal with short-term cap issues by kicking dollars into future years with that device, and then the reckoning comes later. That's why they're facing $22.25 million under Ben Roethlisberger's name this year, even if he's not on the team. I mean, that, that charge is, is there. It's permanent. It's right. not getting changed. It's not getting moved. They're not going to get his his cap number below that. The question is how close to that can they get? And I think of it this way. If Ben Roethlisberger were due to become a free agent March 17, yeah. given the salary cap dropping down to 182, 183, is anybody paying him $19 million? 
for this year uh-huh. on a one-year deal? I, Anybody going to pay him $19 million? I, 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 uh, yeah, that's major iffy. You're right. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of suitors out there. You're right. Not the way he looked at the end of the year. We know the injury history. He's been banged up. We know that, you know, or at least we think we know about the knee issues. You certainly could see it on film as we discussed earlier in the week about this conversation. There was a difference. And I do believe he was injured because early in the year, there was more bounce and movement in the pocket as the year went on. And you thought, wait, is he hurt? We were hearing some of those rumors about the knee and all that. It became more stagnant and, you know, less movement with his feet in the pocket. So, no, I I think you're right, Mike. It's different than Phillip Rivers or Tom Brady last year. There's, There's a little bit more of a risk with Ben Roethlisberger attached to him. And I don't know if there would be that kind of market for him out there. I don't and I think, think that's be. yeah, that's that's part of this mm-hmm. because you, you can't do the lifetime achievement award contract now, not with the cap going down, and you can't pay him for anything he's ever done in the past. It can only be what will you do for me this year? What can I expect this year? What would the market for your services be this year? And I think that's a fair question. If the Steelers. And Ryan Toner, Ben Roethlisberger's agent, are right. going to be communicating about this. Yeah. You know, is it is it fair? I don't know, but I I, I sure would raise that point. Hey, uh, Ben's due to make nineteen million from us this year. We don't think anybody else would pay him nineteen million. You're you're free to go see if anyone would, but w- we think that that what he gets this year should be more in line with the market for his services. And remember, it was Ben Roethlisberger who said back when this all first bubbled up a few weeks ago, I don't care how much I get paid this year. Okay, you don't. Yeah. How about 1.075 million? Well, how about let's how about let's just how about let's just create 18.925 million in cap space by dropping you all the way to the minimum for this year with no funny business, with no movement of money. Just just a straight drop from 19 to the minimum. Let's do that if you don't care. So, I think that's why it hasn't been done because it would be easy to do the restructuring that still gives him 19 million. It's harder to do the restructuring that gives him less because the first thing you got to do is figure out what that less is going to be. Right. Well, and I think your your point's real. I don't think it's um I, again, I, I don't think they're going to be able to shop him out in the market right now and you look at the teams that have quarterback situations, none of them scream, "Ooh, this this is a spot for we got a ready team and we need a guy who's been there, done that, and we want a guy like Ben Roethlisberger. None of no, none of those situations scream that to me. So the, the, I don't think there is a market out there. And you know, listen, you could certainly sit here and argue that the last contract or the contract he's on currently was very generous of the Pittsburgh Steelers to Big Ben. I mean, that contract in itself is a little bit of like, hey. You know, you're still good, but it's also a little icing on top and some sprinkles and everything else because of things you did in all the other years leading up to this. I felt like that was a little bit of a gift in itself that way as far as that contract's concerned. But, uh, you know, again, I can speak for myself. Uh, I I would take a significant pay cut if I was in a, a situation like Big Ben Roethlisberger. Significant. I don't know. You know, where he finds the line of respect or disrespect, does he still want to just, you know, be in the $10 million range just to say, hey, like, I am out here throwing touchdown passes and doing some things, and I'd like to have a little bit, you know, money coming my way and, and protection for the year of or what I'm doing. But, hey, they got – they got. does he want Bud Dupree on the team next year? Does he want, a, does he want Juju Smith-Schuster back? You know, those are the type of things, depending on how much he's willing to take less – certainly increases their chances to sign back those guys, and especially a guy like Bud Dupree, where you know we, we, would, we would say him and T.J. Watt was the best r- pass rush combination in football before they got hurt last year. They gave Ben a two-year extension in 2019 with a $37.5 million signing bonus, right. $34 million average salary on the extension, and again, a package of $19 million this year. Because some people would look at that and say, boy, $19 million, that's not much. He's made his money on this deal previously. And in the year that he got the, the signing bonus of $37.5 million, he appeared in two games. And I think that's part of this, too. What, what risk are you That's willing I mean, to take right? as the Steelers, yeah. given the possibility that, that he's going to break down? He turns 39 next week. But, Chris, there was a clue in Art Rooney's 
statement that reinforces what you and I were saying yesterday, that the Steelers are far enough removed from the way things went poorly at the end of the season to start feeling confident about the next season. Because what Rooney said is, I would I told Ben that we would like to have him back to help us win a championship. Right. They think they can win they do. a championship. They've come to the conclusion. Because I think as of last week, Kevin Colbert, the GM of the team, was kind of like, well, we're really not sure what we're going to have around him. And I think from their perspective, it was, if we're not going to really be in a position to go grab the brass ring, why, why do we want to continue this relationship? Right. They have since decided they think they're going to be in a position to grab the brass ring. I don't. A lot of things can happen. Sure. I mean, they're, they're at least in the in the mix. They are. And the injuries can happen to other teams, too, which make it easier for you to grab the brass ring. But that that uh, it's it's I still think we get to October, November, December. There's going to be mutual regret that they did that one last year, uh, especially if Ben takes less money and and ends up being a little bit resentful. Like he feels like I have no choice but to take less money well, because they kind of backed me into a corner here. He may get a little pissy, sorry, London, about that. And I still think there's a chance neither side wants to be the villain, and they both are kind of interested in ending this. I still think that's hovering over this situation to some degree. I, I, I mean, I, I, maybe a, a little bit there. I, I'm not going to totally disagree with that, but I think they're in, a, they're in a corner a little bit about where their team is at you know, they have a Super Bowl defense, and then, you know, the offense, I think they could probably look at it and go, wait, wide receivers are great. Okay, quarterback is old and, you know, a little crickety and whatever else, but still, you know, crickety? like you, I don't know, you know what I mean, <laughs> but, crickety. Ri- ri- yeah, I don't know. Crickety, crickety, yeah, crickety, right. crickety. One of those, right. Jiminy crickety. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's like, I think that's where it was in my head there, Um, but they, I think they also look, like you said, evaluate their team, and they go... Man, you know, Big Ben still made a number of really good high-level throws during the year, and we didn't do him justice. And they probably look at some of their fixes and go, okay, I mean, it's not crazy to think we can't get this offensive line with a new offensive coordinator and get two, you know, two new pieces on the offensive line and maybe, you know, re-sign Alejandro Villanueva back on the team. And they go, no, we're, we're, we're closer to the top and on the bottom. So I think that that's probably what they come to as far as the realization is that. And and then the other thing, Mike, too, like, so what? Shove them in a corner, like, st- like, what, 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 what do we get? Like, we gotta stop this. First off, at his age right now, he's not as good as Tom Brady, right? Tom Brady take took twenty five million dollars last year, and you and I both know, and most people in football know this that have been around the league. New England shoved Tom Brady in the corner a bunch, and he wasn't you know, old and crickety like Big Ben was at that time. You know, back in 2012 and 13 and 14, those years when, you know, Brady was taking less, it wasn't like he was raising his hand and going, hey, I want to take less. Uh, I want to take less money. No, they were kind of like, you haven't played all that great those last few years. You're going to get this. Do you want to roll the dice and go somewhere else? And Brady went, no, I don't. I'll stay here. And then, of course, he improved his game, and then he regained the power because he was like, no, I'm pretty good still. Now what do you want to do? But what's wrong with force? It's gotten lost in this era of football. You know, when I I was growing up, quarterbacks got forced in the corner all the time. I, I don't know where that happened or that disconnect, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that for a team to do it. These are just, I think, some of the natural aches and pains that relate to the ultimate separation from a long-term franchise yeah. quarterback. And yeah. I think that, that the Steelers are walking on eggshells a little bit here, just a little bit. And I think Ben is saying all the right things too, because at the end of the day, th- there's a fan base that's caught in the middle. Sure. that is paying very close attention to what's happening here. And I really do think that's, that's part of it. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.